We want to welcome Angelica Earl uh, to the program. Uh, she's running in the state of Missouri for senator. So, Angelica, welcome. Hi, thank you. It's nice to finally be able to talk to you. All right, <laughs> great, great. So, now uh, you're running for Claire McCaskill seat. Uh, let me hit you with the most standard thing of all time in the beginning. Uh, conventional wisdom says, what are you doing? Missouri can only be won by a centrist Democrat like Claire McCaskill, especially given how much they voted for Trump. Uh, just let her be and, and, and don't be a progressive primary channel, challenger. How do you answer that? Okay, well, yes, first of all, I am running for the Missouri Democratic US Senate nomination. I am running against Claire. Uh, I hear that all the time. So Missouri is not a red state. Missouri is a blue state. And we saw that when the whole Todd Akin fiasco occurred, um, when she pied pipered him into his position, and then he said that legitimate rape comment. And it kind of woke the sleeping giant here in Missouri, which is the blue voters. And they all ran out to the po polls and voted for Claire to get in. Those same voters are not going to come back out to the polls this time to vote for her. They need a younger, um, uh, ready to go person who really wants to get things done in the Senate and not just play centrist politics. And that's where I come in. So I'm pretty confident that we're actually going to uh, take the seat back for the people of Missouri. So uh, I think the good folks in Missouri would naturally wonder. So what's wrong with Claire McCaskill? If you're a progressive, why, why, why doesn't she, why doesn't she cut it for you? Uh, well, we can talk about what's happened in the last few weeks. We can talk about how she just threw uh, the dreamers under the bus to uh, start the government back up, which really wasn't necessary. I'm not even sure why they were involved in that process. Uh, she threw our Fourth Amendment rights under the bus when she voted to expand the NSA surveillance. Um, she consistently votes against the people of Missouri and what we want just because she assumes that it's a red state. But we know that it's not a red state, otherwise she wouldn't be there in the first place. So I am very, very much more to the left of her. Uh, I do not appreciate her stance on Medicare for all. I do not appreciate how she blames the deficit for things when we now know that the deficit isn't really an actual problem. Especially right after that, she voted for $700 billion to go right into the military industrial complex after she says we can't afford these things. So that's just not the case. Um, we know better. We have the internet, to, so we know better. And um, well, by the way, she tried to take that out too with net neutrality with putting in a Jeep pie, I think, if I remember correctly. But about three hours after I told her that was a bad move on Facebook and she needed to vote for us, she went ahead and voted for net neutrality. Wait, you mean she voted against net neutrality? No, she voted for net neutrality. She was, uh, she voted against it when she approved a Jeep pie. And then later she voted for it when it came down to it. She's actually going to vote for it, I should say. There's a, a bill on the table that a bunch of senators are trying to sign up on and she actually did end up signing on it. Oh, I see, after the pressure, okay. Yes, yeah, after the pressure. Yeah, mm -hmm. so all right, then uh, let's talk about your uh, policy positions. Uh, if you became the next senator uh, from Missouri, uh, what, what are your top priorities that you'd fight for? Uh, top priorities, Medicare for all, single payer health care, criminal justice reform, we need that desperately. Uh, that is a huge umbrella, criminal justice reform would be um, rescheduling marijuana, it would be ending for-profit prisons, uh, and a whole bunch of other things go along with that. So we have a big umbrella of criminal justice reform. We have the Medicare for all, uh, we also have taxes. So we need serious tax reform now, which is a really big problem. So if we're going to have a senator in there like Claire, who is not going to actually fight for the tax reform and just kind of say, hey, you're you're taking away uh, insurance from people, that's not okay, so I'm going to vote against it because of that. What about all the other implications and things that are going uh, to go along with that? We have this big problem that we have to face head on, and that is that corporations are not paying enough taxes. We're paying too many taxes, and we're at for an economic collapse. Uh, Claire actually did put her name on and co-sponsored a bill to roll back Dodd-Frank uh, in the midst of this tax bill that was put out. And we are definitely, if that goes through, we are headed for a huge economic collapse to the point where I'm actually ready to pull my money out of the bank because they're not, I'm not going to get caught broke like most people will be. So I hope that word gets out that we're heading for that. Yeah. When they uh, vote to roll back the, the minor protections of Dodd-Frank, uh, that drives me crazy. It, it drove me crazy when Obama called it historic reform, when it was just ba grazing the surface. Now to even roll back those small protections and to have Democrats like Claire McCaskill vote for it is maddening. Uh, so I mean, what's the yeah. point of having Democrats if they don't do that? Um, right. So. 
uh, I notice in your materials you talk about an American dream tax plan. What does that mean? Okay, so what I would like to do is I would like to kind of get back to the good old days where corporations got taxed at 90%. And then that money can actually, um, well, if you believe in MMT, you're gonna go one way with this theory. If you don't, you're gonna go another way with this. But uh, basically, it will make sure that corporations treat their employees the way they need to be treated. So you tax them at 90%, then you offer incentives slash tax deductions to, say, have parental leave, uh, offer products that do not come from areas that were um, have to be deforested for that. You can offer them for full-time jobs. If you have so many employees, we can offer you a deduction for that. So we can actually help you get some of those profits back. Now, 90% seems like a really, really big number, but it's not. If we taxed Walmart at 90% in 2016, their total profits would still be about $13 billion. So that's really not a whole lot of money to tax them this high, at least until we can get things settled back down to where we have a balance again. Because right now, like I said, we're heading for an economic collapse and these corporations cannot be trusted to get us out of it. Uh, I love watching MMT too, I love when they tap out. Um, but for the good folks at home who might not know what it is, what's MMT that you mentioned? So MMT is basically the theory that we print money. And if we print money, then we can spend it into a sector of government. So say that we have um, a bunch of money that we print and we pay it into our healthcare industry. And all of those people in the healthcare industry, doctors, nurses, uh, their administrative staff, they would all have money going into their pockets from the federal government who prints it and puts it in there. That can be spread out amongst other sectors of government. And then once that money goes in, that's how the service industry thrives is by those people getting that money. And then the taxes would literally be taxed just to pull excess money out of the system to keep inflation at bay. Okay, uh, Angel Angelica, all of a sudden I'm fascinated by your campaign uh, because uh, I have, I've got to be honest with you, I have not heard anyone talking about a 90% corporate tax rate. Uh, and, and I'm not sure I agree with it, you're definitely to the left of me. Uh, but I do know it'll make people's heads explode, and that I enjoy. Uh, so, like, and if your campaign catches on fire arguing for legalizing medical marijuana and criminal justice reform and workers' rights and a 90% corporate tax rates, well, then the establishment has no idea what's in store for it. So, uh, I'm fighting. what's that? <laughs> I am definitely coming fighting. I am so tired of this. I'm I'm part of the generation where I don't know what's going to happen day to day. I don't know if I'm going to lose my job tomorrow. Where am I going to get my income? Unemployment doesn't pay enough to really even float. Uh, we have this huge income gap, so you can't even get health care if you get find yourself without a job. You, if what if your car breaks down? If your car breaks down and you're not making enough money, how are you going to fix your car? So that's what our generation is faced with. And I am utterly sick and tired of living day to day not knowing what's gonna happen to me. I'm taking the experience that I've learned from the health insurance marketplace, I'm taking the experience that I've learned in college and in the business world and in uh, the retail world, and I'm gonna take that with me to the Senate to kind of correct these things, because I've been there with everyone else. I'm living there with everyone else right now. I actually live in an apartment, and it's just, it's one of those things where I am so tired of this. So I'm gonna take my education and I'm gonna take the seat back. Man, I love your attitude. <laughs> so I wanna put up the links uh, here as we always do, uh, and it'll always be in the description box below on YouTube if you're watching this later, and in the comment section on Facebook. Uh, if you wanna help uh, Angelica uh, fight the power. Um, and you know, again, whether I agree with that one policy you laid out or not is not nearly as important as your fighting attitude and uh, your, um, your aggressive stance. And yeah, I mean, wouldn't it be amazing if a young woman living in their apartments, uh, and by the way, you look younger. I know you've got 15 years of experience in business and management, I should mention that, right? Uh, but uh, if if real people took the seat back from the, the lords that run the place now, and McCaskill is certainly among those. So yeah. Godspeed, uh, can't wait to see how it turns out for you. Oh, thank you. You know, the bottom line is here is, uh, you know, we had a Bernie Sanders campaign where we begged for him to be just a little bit more aggressive, just be a little bit more out there and put her in her place just a little bit more. And I saw that and I was like, you know, I'm that type of person. I can do that to a corporate Democrat, so I'm going to. And I, honestly, Claire, if you're going to watch this, because I know you are because you're monitoring our campaign very closely, um, I would say, 
you need to come back to the blue side because right now you're red and the entire state who is blue is not going to vote for you. They're going to vote for Team Missouri because that's what we are. We're all together in this as one team. And if we're going to take the seat back, that's how it's going to be. But that's also expanding. Missouri has a whole bunch of candidates that are all getting ready to get together and push for one platform all at the same time and all in one swoop and all support each other. So we're ready to go. Missouri's actually going to go blue, and I'm pretty excited about it.